Hello and welcome to the Snippets of Leadership podcast. Let me start with a question. What is orange and sounds like a parrot? The answer, obviously, is a carrot. Now, chances are that some of you may have cracked a tiny smile or found this joke very mildly amusing, and that is fine. My point wasn't the joke per se, but using it to bring in a core element in this creative leadership series. One that we haven't talked about yet. Humor. Now, the first reaction you could be having is wondering what humor has to do with leadership and with having ideas. The answer is quite an awful lot. John Cleese, one of my personal heroes and arguably one of the funniest and most creative minds of human history, one of the people behind Monty Python's Flying Circus, to be clear, once said that in a joke, the laugh comes at a moment when you connect two different frameworks of reference in a new way. So when your frameworks of reference are orange and sounds like a parrot, linking them with the word carrot is unexpected and new and can be amusing. But of course, there is more to it. And if you've been careful throughout this mini-series, you'll have noticed that this process that Mr. Cleese is describing is pretty much the same one we've been talking about. He also mentioned that creativity is like humor, and that creativity is when two frameworks come together to create new meaning. So, does that mean that creativity and humor work the same way? Yes. And so much more than that. Now, this happened around 1991, and I could just leave it there. It's only the anecdotal opinion of some person, after all, skilled as he may be. However, something interesting happened in the meantime. Science and research caught up with creativity and humor. It took about 20 years, but in a wonderful piece of research by Dr. Barry Kudrowitz of the MIT, scans of the brain show that the area of your brain that lights up gets activated when you get the punchline to a joke is pretty much the same area that lights up when you have a new idea. So all of a sudden, this is not anecdotal anymore. This is scientific. And scientifically, then, we know that there is a link between creativity and humor. Specifically, that if you're creative, you're also funny. And if you're funny, you're creative, because creativity and humor follow pretty much exactly the same process. Now, I'm not necessarily suggesting that in order to lead others and develop creative leadership skills, you start doing comedy. You could, and you'd probably benefit. A large part of what I do and use in my training comes from improv, for example. And Kudrowitz's research shows that professional improvisers can generate on average 20% more ideas than professional product designers and of a 25% higher creative quality, to give you a reference. What I do suggest, though, is that you at least be aware of this element and of ways you could bring it into your work to your advantage. What I'm getting at is that if humor and creativity work the same way, and we know they do, you don't necessarily need to make the whole thing fun at all costs, but at the very least, you should not structure your work and process and your teams in a way that is designed to eradicate any sort of humor, playfulness, or silliness. And that's a lot more common than you may think. One opinion that I often hear when I make this point in my workshops, and this is true for both conservative and innovative organizations, is that it all sounds nice in theory, but in practice, you can't just accept to play and be silly at work because it's not serious. And this, this aura of seriousness that for some reason we need to live by at work is, in my experience, the real underlying block to a team's ability of generating ideas and leading a creative process. Look, we're talking about scientific studies, brain scans, decades of research in psychology and neuroscience. That's pretty serious stuff. So when you hear someone saying we can't play and be silly at work, that's not serious, what they really mean is we cannot do it because it's not formal. And while formality has some places to exist, what is the point of being forcefully formal with the people you work with? What is the point of forcefully keeping people at a distance and adding another layer of social pressure? Yes, this distance gives you a layer of protection from others, but it also makes you more insecure about what is appropriate behavior and what isn't, and makes you question anything you say and the way you say it. 
bring all this back to creative leadership and remember the two steps we talked about. Generating ideas without caring about making sense and then connecting them later. Bring formality into the mix at any level and you'll completely mess up step one. Nobody will be able to do it correctly because the necessity to be formal will block them. We've also seen that there is a direct link between how many ideas you're able to generate and how creative they are. So if you insist with your team that they be serious, and by serious you mean formal, and behave well, ponder thoughts, don't play around, and so on, you are killing your chances of getting them to share their more creative ideas right in the beginning. So this leaves us with one key point. Part of creative leadership is also building the right conditions for everyone around you to be able to play and be silly with each other. You want to sugarcoat it to them and not make it sound weird? Then frame it as psychological safety. That always works. In a previous episode, I had mentioned that individual ideation is always more effective than group ideation. And that is still true for 95% of the cases, but I also mentioned that there was one exception to that rule that I've seen in my work and in research. And this is actually the reason why I've added this episode. The most effective ideation sessions are group sessions, like brainstorming, in which people are having fun, being silly, playing and bantering with each other without formality and social pressures, all while keeping an eye on their tasks. Do you want a clear indicator to know when your team's heads are in the right places? Look at them. If they're laughing and smiling while coming up with ideas, counterintuitive as it may be, you're on a good track. Having fun, being silly and being serious, in other words, don't need to be a contradiction. And the fact that most team leaders think that way doesn't make it any more true. So... Where does this leave you? In the long term, with building a team culture, values and working conditions that include and welcome play and humor. In the short term, with knowing the difference between being serious and being formal, and with knowing that for some things you need your team to be able to play, to be silly, be stupid and joke around. That is not formal, but it's very, very serious. I know it's a lot to take in, but this should hopefully close the circle and give you yet another tile to build into your leadership skills. In the next episodes, I'll bring it all to a close and share with you two exercises you can use with your team to bring all these pieces of knowledge to them and to start building your creative leadership style. Thank you for listening. My name is Eduardo Bindazane from EBZ Coaching. I'm a leadership and communication trainer and consultant. And if you have any questions about what you've heard in this episode, please reach out to me via LinkedIn, Facebook, or my website. I'll be answering the most interesting questions on the show. And if you know someone that will benefit from this type of content, please make sure you recommend this podcast to them. Thank you and see you next time.